now it's on to stage one, 2018, uh, prologue, 1.6 kilometers, I believe it is, done and retired, 155 for the winner, Ed Clancy. Now, unfortunately, I missed all the footage from earlier on, so the winners have all been decided, and the top three has all been decided, but you'll just see what happens. So Ed Clancy won at a time of 1.55, and then we have basically one second back, Mads Pedersen, Lassie Norman Hansen, Alex Frame, and Jack Nicole. Uh, basically, they were all in the top five. Obviously, one second is wrong because it was uh, it was smaller than that, but the margins were pretty small. And then the, rounding out the top ten, we had Alex Edmondson, Ian Bibby, Michael Hatburn, Graham Biggs, and Matt Gibson. So, JLT Condor had a very good run. Uh, the team from the, the Continental team, uh, they won the team's classification as well. Um, Ed Clancy was a former Olympic, well, he still is an Olympic champion. I think he's probably won three gold medals in the team pursuit uh, 2008, 12, and 16. Uh, but yeah, it was a really good race, very enjoyable to watch. I didn't watch the match catch the end. I'll wait for the rest of it, which is a bit annoying, but it was a real good race. Really, I really like these technical prologues. Especially when they're on road bikes. It's quite cool. I think that this guy takes his corner, is absolutely flying around. And then pedaling, it's just like, I don't know, it's really pure, pure form of racing. Really enjoy it. Watching in the old days, especially when it's so tight like this, you aren't really sure who's going to win. There was no time in the screen, you literally had no idea what was going on. So for this race, there's no time for bikes, there's no tight wheels, there's no tri spokes, I guess. It's pretty much just a normal road setup. Um, there were disc wheels in the, like a couple years ago, but I think this year they were like, no. And look at this, what is this skateboard doing on the, on the cycle track? Get off me. It's, it's like a race. That? What are you doing? It's like a professional race. It's a mountain. Uh, there are lots of continental teams here, and then there's Trek Sega Fredo. It's and, such a uh, sick course. They just used right through the sand to the city. I forget that name because it changes so many times in the last good. couple of years. And uh, what? they're the two world tour teams. Yeah, I know. Like, it's such a sick course. Racing in Europe. So doing that, oh, it's super course. technical. Yeah. Froome does what Froome wants to do. And then I think for the Pro Conti teams, there's like uh, Ron Pot, there's Israel Cycling Academy, and there's might be one other, but no one really. Oh, yeah, Aqua Blue. So here's Ian Bibby, solid rider from the UK. Has Come on, Ian Bibby. Former national crit champion, national mountain bike champion. I think he's won cyclocross events as well. He's super solid. He's such a strong lad. He wins a lot of races in the UK. He won the Chorley Grand Prix on his own last year, which is pretty impressive. Um, and he, he, I expect him to go well this week, maybe for the GC. He's, um, he's quite a versatile rider. Not super... Like not an incredible climber, but... This guy is such a strong style. British rider. But he just, just super good, super he good like wins every well. British race. Uh, I think he'll do well. I'm not sure who else will have. I think, obviously, he will do well. Um, the thing with the, this prologue is it's sort of irrelevant in terms of time gaps, because they're also small. And, like a couple of seconds, maybe minutes. and here are the here are the final remainders of, remainders of the riders. Obviously, it's not that important uh, the like the way they're going out because it's not like to a GC. It's just sort of random to get allocated slots. It's like the last rider was supposed to be Damon Housen because he won it last year, but give it to Alex Edmo um, instead, the Australian national champion. Look at this weird technique as well. It's got his like arms out, super narrow bars. It's really strange. I've never. What position is that? Yeah, like, it looks it's like a, it's like a weird broom position. position. Like doing some weird. What the fuck is that? I don't know what this was. Um, He's like half anyway, arrow. I just thought we could just get arrow. Size him too much because he's pro pro rider. What the hell are you doing? The sound of him is really annoying. Yeah, look at his. Look at the the left like the angle of the lever as well. It's like that. Yeah, yeah. By the winners, the women's was two and nine. There's a decent, decent gap. I guess a lot of that is just because, generally on shoulder efforts, men tend to have like a bigger percentage gap uh, compared Here to Here comes Ian Bibby, come on legend. Are physically stronger on average, especially at the elite level. Um, but I think technically, it'll be interesting to see like the um, technical corners if they were men were that much faster. I'm not sure if they would. I think he's going to do it. Or what, maybe the men will take more risks. Come on Ian. But oh, Ian Bibby's man. flying up to the line here with his on his condor yeah, they had a they had pretty nice bikes the old jlt condor he was wearing he had a rear light on which i thought was weird but maybe i, I just thought that was really weird on a race yeah, the light, in the anyway because it's closed roads and everything but, but anyway it's australia so no one knows yeah. alex frame he's from uh, new zealand it's on the ride i've ridden with him um when I was a couple of weeks ago he was a, he was a good bloke he was, he was quite a sprinter they have a lot of weird techniques of like some sprinting, some staying in the saddle. I think it's so short it must be hard to get the power out you know, because it's not, it's not flat it's either. It's like it's not straight, sorry. So you even have to surge up. So I think it's quite easy to either gas it and just be dead at the end or not really let it all out and sort of 
realize that you're not you're not you know actually you're not like dead basically. Uh, but I think the good thing is luckily that the last couple of meters is pretty straight, so I guess you can empty it, empty the tank there. But yeah, these guys look pretty horrible. I mean, this is the last ride of Alex Edmondson. Come on, man. That's good. That's not bad. He's definitely a super track specialist. Um, especially That's very sad. It's just a really punchy event. You can see how fast Alex Edmondson is out of the box. Like Egg Clancy mm. did really well. Lassie Norman yeah, Hanson is quite good. He's a world champion in team individual pursuit. He's a super strong rider, really, really strong. Like on the lead outs, he's incredible. And like Alex Frame, I think, is also taking some big risks here, really flying around the corners. You can see into that sort of shape. You can know, like Drake Gully, I guess, or something. So there's some of them bunny hop, some of them sort of just go straight in. But I think that's where I met Emerson, lost her chain in the women's event. There's a um, solid rider. He had a good outing with the Uni SA. So uh, two minutes uh, total. Under recently. So he's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, the, I think I've like, had a chance to stand on the 54. Uh, I can't see the world well, champion. Well, no, he was he's like one load of gold medals on the track. Budget, etc. But I think the track Madon looks pretty good as an aero bike. Um, he's probably one of the best best you can have. Um, choose one. Um, Reacto as well, Marie Reacto. Maybe the new propel, but I guess no one's running that because some are burnt here in the discs, etc. Like on this race, I mean, the Madon. Like when you look at that, there's just no wires, no nothing. It just looks so fast on the front end, and he looks close. He was in 155.8. I'm lucky, mate. Just outside the top. Just outside the top three. Like so same as lunch, pretty much. Fortunately. But a solid ride nonetheless. And he, he might be competing for GC. I think they norm, they're going for Ruben Guerrero and Egg. Um, I think he's, Alex this Edmund. Awesome. he's this new Belgian climber who's literally like the smallest guy I've ever seen. I saw him in real life. He just has nothing on him. How the fuck can they tell how fast they're going? Exactly. Like, I think he's going about 47 now. I think he probably should win it or maybe Damon House and might get given the chances. It's, it's hard to say. On the, often on these early season races, the leaders don't necessarily want to be in top form. So that's not like another dumb mistake to do it. It's also sort of good Unlucky, man. to get other people winning, not just the usuals. And here we go, Alex Emerson coming real close. Everyone's like, oh no, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? The timing was a bit off, so no one really knew. Like, as in a yes, time, you get 156, 67, so it wasn't the fastest. But there you can see, Ed Clancy puts his hands in the air and beats no worries, Clancy. Clancy. And 30 something. Track rider who is All he does Clancy is ride track Denmark, and do really crits. He's shit, shit at road, road races. Race. Literally, after like 20 minutes, he gets tired. But for like 20 minutes, he's fucking insane. Where's the 